It's very straightforward, actually. Chelsea really wants him. Leicester really don't want to sell him. It's, uh, it's pretty as straightforward as that. Um, Chelsea have had two bids rejected so far. Uh, the second of those, I understand, was in excess of £60 million. And on the face of it, you know, a, a purely business point of view, you might say, that's a good deal for Leicester. They bought him for £30 million less than two years ago from St Etienne. Double your money in just over 18 months. But... From a Leicester perspective, they do not want to sell him because they believe his value is only going to increase uh, the more years he plays in the Premier League. And remember, Leicester have got him under a five-year contract, so they're pretty secure in their thinking there. He only signed an extension back in March. And also, he's only 21, so they think he's got a lot of growing still to do, which can only enhance his value. But my understanding is that Chelsea are prepared to go higher. They're preparing a third bid for him at some stage in the, the next few days. And that bid, I'm told, will test Leicester's resolve. It's much closer to what Leicester value him at. Um, which is an ambiguous total right and now, you have to say. Leicester still don't want to sell him, but I think if, if Chelsea are prepared to pay the money, Leicester will let him go. But what is that value? I suspect it's equal to or maybe even more than the £80 million pounds that Leicester received, remember, for Harry Maguire from Manchester United a couple of seasons ago. So Chelsea can get him, I think, if they really, really want him, but they're going to have to spend big. Guys, what, what do you think? Dave, can, can, we, can we see him going to Chelsea? Like, like Rob said, it's obviously going to take uh, a lot of money. We know Chelsea have got a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, an astronomical amount of money. But when you look at Wesley Fofana, you know he's going to be a player at Champions League level. So, therefore, Champions League clubs are going to be looking at him, even though he is still relatively, I, I suppose, inexperienced at the top table of, of European football. But as, as we kind of talked with Marcel van der Kran earlier with Lissandro Marti Martinez kind of setting the fee in the Eredivisie for a player. When Leicester look at what Chelsea have paid for Mark Kukurea, they've got every right, therefore, to demand the fee that they would like. And when you're looking at top fees there, Rob mentioned Harry Maguire, you're looking at you know, a Virgil van Dijk at £75 million. It's going to be taking that sort of fee. He's got such a long time as well left on his contract, as, as Rob points out. And you fear that... From, a, from Leicester's point of view, if this third bid reaches that type of level, that might be the one that gets them to the table. Rob, I know you're saying sort of ultimately they, they could effectively double their money in terms of what they get for the player, maybe, maybe even more than that. Um, obviously, Leicester don't want to sell, but do you think ultimately it's going to come down to a fact that they may be in a situation where the offer is just too good to turn down? I, I, look, let Leicester under no pressure to sell. Uh, I mean, they, they're not in financial difficulty, despite the fact they haven't signed a single player this season, and a lot of their, their fans are, are really quite worried about it. Um, but I think it will reach a level, if Chelsea are prepared to pay it, that Leicester would say, look, that's a really good deal. We could use that money to invest elsewhere in the squad, maybe buy three, four world-class players that we can then make better, um, which has been the Leicester model throughout, hasn't it? I mean, look, we know that Leicester have sold the likes of Kante, of Mares. Um, of Harry Maguire himself, of Ben Chilwell, they've sold some of their star players, never more than one in a, in a, in a, in a, in a season, if you like, um, and they've used that money as wisely as they possibly can to reinvest in, in other players. So I do think it comes down to pure money, and I do think it comes down to whether Chelsea are prepared to pay that money. Of course, things might change if Wesley Fofana starts agitating for a move. Um, it's pretty clear, from my understanding, that his agents are keen on the move. It'd be very lucrative for them, wouldn't it? Um, and he did put on his Twitter account the other day something fairly cryptic that said, I'm going to have to, people have told me I've got to make decisions that might upset a few people if they're for the best of me. <laughs> Read into that what you will. Did it come from Fafana or somebody else in his team who has access to his account? We don't know. My understanding is he's a very level headed guy. He's very happy at Leicester, otherwise, he wouldn't have signed that new contract extension back in March. So he's not agitating for a move. It's only if he starts doing that, I think the situation might change. But as things stand, we're expecting. Chelsea to come back with a big bid, even bigger than they've managed already in the next few days. Let's see how Leicester react to that. Is it big enough for them to tempt them and, and, and let them think that's the sort of money we can use to reinvest in the squad? Yeah, it's going to be going to be interesting, isn't it? I mean, Rob touched on players there, key players who, who have left before, the likes of Harry Maguire, Ben Chilwell, Kante, Mares. Uh, how damaging would it be if Fafana was to go? Because we see with those players, they've, they've moved on before, that there is life after these players. Yeah, well, I, th I think it's about retaining reputation for, for Leicester and that comes from getting the money that they want for him because if you if you sort of um, back down and then sell him for 50 million then 
you're not retaining that reputation for the next guy. And that is a reputation that have built Leicester City and they need to retain. In terms of on the pitch, um, it would be a huge loss. And I think we saw that last season with the, the, you know, the injuries, uh, the injury that he had and how that affected the team. In terms of like, passes completed, fantastic, tackles really high. And in terms of the top five leagues, for passes completed in the top 18%, tackles top 10%, tackles one top 5%, and interceptions top 7%. So there's no doubt he's a fantastic footballer. Also, when we talk about the price, you talk about the contract. Also, a 21-year-old, this is someone who, you know, you're hoping to get 10, 12, however many years from, and he's definitely, definitely good enough. So that's why the, the, the numbers are so high. So I understand Chelsea's point of view, but I also under, understand Leicester's point of view. And as, I think as long as they can stay strong, regardless of either way that it works out, I think uh, Leicester will be in a stronger position as a whole, as a club moving forward.